Welcome to this video where we continue to look at object-oriented programming. We'll be looking at creating particular classes and creating instances of those classes, along with using methods. So in this video you're going to learn a number of things, including how to create a planet class. We're going to look at this very special word called abstraction, which is one of the key pillars of object-oriented programming. We're also going to look at how to write our own class in Python, how to create a student class, so not looking just at shapes, but something slightly more abstract with a method that performs a very interesting, specific task. So if we go back and remind ourselves of the fact that every object in the universe that we live in has attributes and methods. Attributes and methods. And what a class does is it groups these things together in a way that we can really easily work with them. One of the key features and pillars of object-oriented programming is abstraction. Now, a definition of abstraction is it's just the concept of exposing only the required essential characteristics and behavior. Let's simplify that for you. Now, suppose you were creating a planet class or a game which dealt with planets. What attributes would you define within that planet class? Well, it's quite interesting that obviously it's the details that make life beautiful. Every planet has all kinds of things on it. I imagine the surface of a planet might look something like this with, with little stones and crevices and valleys and mountains. But when you code, you leave out the irrelevant details because otherwise you'd go completely mad. So you have to focus on the essentials, the important, the relevant details. And in effect, we're going to look more deeply at abstraction, but in a very simple to understand definition, that is what abstraction is. It is leaving out the unnecessary or the irrelevant details when you code. So for exam example, if you were creating a planet class, you might have, you might just think of it as a circle, as we'll look at in a minute. So you might define um, things like the x and the y, the radius, and we might have methods such as find out the planet's size or the circumference of a planet, etc. In the same way, if you were creating a student class, if you pause the screen and have a look at this, you would think about the important details that you are dealing with. So you wouldn't be looking at the student's hair or the student's feelings but you'd be thinking about what you need, what data you need. So the attributes in this case are the name of the student and the test score. And we've created over here a specific method to see if the student has met their target. Just by way of recap, let's remind ourselves about how to create a task, uh, a class. and some of the key features. Now, remember that we said that one of the first things you do, it's just good practice, is to create what's called the init function, where you have these double underscores. Always have the self parameter, which is one of the key things. And remember, self is how you refer to things in the class from within itself. It's the first parameter in any function definition, and you use it to access different functions and variables inside a class. So for instance, Say we had a planet class and we're treating it really like a circle, you might have thing variables such as x and y and radius that you'd like to pass as parameters, and we would define them here using the self parameter. You can then go on and think about the different methods that you might want to create, such as scale, size. Now, this is a little function that might perhaps let you scale the planets to make them bigger or smaller. So let's take the radius. Etc. And you can look at the code that we've provided to see the different methods and attributes which are there. Now the key thing, obviously, is then how to create an instance of the class. So I could create planet1 over here 
I'm creating an object, I'm calling on the class, and I could give it some coordinates, I'd give it a radius, I could even give it a colour. Obviously we haven't created the draw method yet, but I could do that. Remember all your methods need to be on the same indentation level. And you could go on, you could make planet 2, you could create an instance of it. Remember always doing so and calling the attributes which are needed to create it. And you could go on like that. In the example that we've provided for you, we see the creation of planet 1 and planet 2, which is drawn inside it. So if we run this program, you can pause the screen and have a look at how it comes up. We have a little black planet there, a red planet, a yellow planet inside it. And obviously that's all been created just by playing around with different objects. So at this point, I would encourage you to look at the code, attempt the task, just so you have completely consolidated your understanding of how to create a very simple class with an init function for attributes to make different methods and then actually go on and look at the student class and attempt the task that we've put in there. Now in the student class, it's quite interesting, we've got two attributes, one name and one test score. And we have a little function which says, has achieved target. So we have an interesting little student here, and we're saying, has this student achieved a score greater than 90? And if he has, we would like this method to print target met, or if not, target not met. We've created an object here. We've passed the parameters which are necessary. So in this case, Jonathan, which is the name, 99, which is the test score, and then we're actually calling this method. So has achieved target is calling this method for the object student1. And if we run the program, you'll see that Jonathan, 99, target met, well done. It goes without saying that if I change that to 21 and run the program, we'd get this output. So do play around with that. In the next video, we're going to look at a few more very fundamental concepts and really step up your knowledge of classes and how to work with object-oriented programming.